What's up, nerds? This is Deej Penalo here from the Nerd Talk Lips Podcast Network, and I'm here to talk to you guys about Patreon. Patreon.com slash Nerd Talk Lips Podcast Network. If you become a patron, you pay as little as $1 per month, recurring. That is $12 per year billed monthly. That is less than pennies a day and hardly noticeable when it comes out. That is less than you pay for a coffee or a Coke. Now listen, when you do this, you gain access to an exclusive patron-only RSS feed. You can add that RSS feed to your favorite podcast player. That will be the home of the Nerd Talk Lips podcast bonus shows provided by individual hosts within our network. That being Robert and Colton from Virginia Geekums, me, or Lane from Nerd Talk Lips. That is a really dope deal, guys. We're working really hard to provide you guys more content from within the network. And this will include other Patreon-exclusive shows. Head over to our Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash nerdtalklips. We have a group for the Nerd Talk Lips podcast network. You can join Bridging the Geekdoms, all that good stuff. We've got a lot of stuff coming. So if you could consider maybe heading over to patreon.com slash nerdtalklips podcast network and just putting a dollar on the line every month. That would be extremely helpful. What's going on, everybody? Uh, Robert and Colton are here from Bridging the Geekdoms. Sorry, What's up? I, I was kind of mesmerized by Colton's dancing in the music there. That's yeah. why I kind of forgot to start talking. Hell yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice I was doing it. Like I was just in my own little world for a second. <laughs> oh, boy. So what's going on? This is Bridging the Geekdoms, you know, a podcast where we talk all things comics, movies, TV. And possibly penis size. And some other things and so much more. So, uh, again, I am Robert, and with me as always, Colton. Your everyday penis boy penis. Uh, skinny Colton. Man only. <laughs> uh, so, what's going on? Um, how, how have things been, Colton? Things have been good. That's good. Watched Hotel Transylvania 2. Ah, how'd that go for you? It was funny. I, like, I, I genuinely laughed. It was, it was a hoot. A hoot? A hoot. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen the first and second one already. I still haven't seen the third one. Kids, you know. Yeah. But I actually have enjoyed both of them. I yeah. like the second one. I didn't didn't like the first one, but I like the second one. Yeah. Um, if you hear that like humming in the background, I apologize. It's my air conditioner. It's a little too hot in here to yeah, not have it, it on right now. So. It's hotter than a nut sack out, so we're gonna keep yeah. it on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be real mm-hmm. cool if we didn't, but you know. That's yeah, right. Dehydration's a serious thing in this type of weather. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. So, uh, is that all you did? You just listened to or watched, not uh, listened to, watched Hotel Transylvania uh, 2? Hmm. Mm. I'm trying to think. Did I? I don't think I watched anything else. You don't think? I don't think. If I did, it didn't stick with me. Oh, I watched Hereditary again. Oh, did you? Yeah, I will say, it's the, the movie that the more you watch it, like every time I watched it, I liked it more and more. That's weird. I watched it three times. First time, I was like, I don't know if I like it. Second time, I was like, no, nah, this, is, this is okay. Third time, I was like, I was picking up things more as they go. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a movie that isn't very in your face about what's happening. So, like, third time through, I was like, oh, this all makes way more sense than the first time you watch it. So, I was like, oh, this is actually really good. Interesting. So, yeah, that's about the only other thing I watched. Hmm. I see. I think I finished Daddy's Home too, and that was a train wreck. Then see, I, I look. I'm not saying it was a work of art. It's not as good as the first one. I didn't enjoy. I, I like the first one, but it's not just, as bad as you're making it out to be. I did my not. God. I did not like it. I did not like the. Second it was one. the. It, that was the the movie that actually opened my eyes to like John Cena. Like, okay, John Cena might be able to be a decent actor. Yeah, and I then mean, like, I watched but, Blockers, and I was like, he's freaking hilarious. And Blockers. Blockers was hilarious. So <laughs> he did a butt chug in that movie. Yes, he did. I wonder if it was real or if it was fake. I'm sure it was fake. I wonder if he actually put a hose in his butt. Again, fake. You never know. I do know. I was there. I saw it. Oh, nice. Live. You you were the I stunt saw, double. I, I saw his brown eye. <laughs> the whispering eye. It Rusty tell, wagon wheel. It tells no secrets. <laughs> yep, see where we were talking about penises in the intro? Well, we're talking about assholes this episode. <laughs> I mean, we cover all things. Yeah. 
Vaginas, buttholes, mm. penises. Uh, vagina's going a little too far, man. Come on. Sometimes. <laughs> um, I forget what the name of the movie was, but I saw Lindsay Lohan's tits in a movie. Yeah, I, I've seen them before. They're pretty it's disgusting. It's like The Cottage or some shit like that. I mean, she's just disgusting all around. Yeah, so. I mean. Even when she was younger, I don't think she was that attractive. No, she was like that stereotypical redhead with all the freckles. And yeah, like, and just wasn't hot. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't fuck her with your vagina. <laughs> 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 yep, there's the vagina, <laughs> and that son is the birds and the bees. So this episode is definitely not safe for work. So, hey, whatever. Uh, let's see, what did I do? Um, worked a whole bunch, did a whole bunch of other work, worked some more, and then watched Jack Ryan. Whoa, <laughs> no. So Jack Ryan, I believe, was eight episodes uh, released on Amazon Prime uh, this past Friday. Uh, I tell you what, I'm a huge Jack Ryan fan. I saw, I've seen every movie, Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan movie, uh, as far back as you know, Hunt for Red October, uh, you know, Patriot Games, Good and Present Danger, mm. Some of All Fears, Jack Ryan, like all those movies, I have absolutely loved. They're they're just some of my favorite movies growing up. I mean, that's those. I mean, as much as Star Wars introduced me to Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones. Mm. Uh, Clear and Present Danger and Patriot Games for me, I was like, holy crap, he's more than just Han Solo and Indiana Jones. And yeah. that, like, those are the movies that kind of opened my eyes up for more of what Harrison Ford was capable of. And then that just took me down a rabbit hole, you know, seeing mm. like regarding Henry and, and still uh, never watch Blade and Runner. The Fugitive and, and stuff like that. Uh, I, ha- I I've I've watched like half of Blade Runner. I, I just I which edition fall asleep, though? I always fall asleep during it. It's like the like the twenty five minute edition, and I fall asleep during it. So uh, <laughs> I've never like watched either of them i know there's not a 25 minute edition people i'm just saying it was the short one that i fell asleep through but i i, I don't know like uh but anyways getting back to so jack ryan okay that's where we're going that's where we're yeah, at jacking ryan so uh i went into this really excited uh one because i'm a huge fan of the universe that tom clancy created years ago before he passed away rest in spaghetti and uh i also like uh John Krasinski like I think he's Mm -hmm. he's a pretty good actor you know I thought this would be a cool different role for him from his most famous role being that of Jim on The Office it's crazy how it's like polar opposites yeah and you know what's crazy you know he was up for the role of Captain America before yeah um, I knew that yeah before Chris Evans honestly I think he could have played it I think he could have taken it too or played it too Uh, but he didn't want to do the superhero thing and it's kind of weird because Jack Ryan while he's not a your typical superhero Mm -hmm. he is a superhero kind of person you know more realistic version of that Um, you know he's he's an all American essentially yeah but I was real excited about this show so I went into it with really high expectations and I I, I will say I mean it, it blew me away like the show blew me away uh, I've I've watched now two original, three original shows on Amazon. The first one being the Zombie Land uh, show that they tried to have like four years ago, which was fucking atrocious. That's no surprise. I watched The Tick, which I think is a great oh, show. You you finished it? Yeah. Nice. I've watched that. A great show, and then Jack Ryan. So they're two for three in my book. Where they're Maybe. like that's sixty six point six seven percent. So you know, definitely a good. A, uh, good job by Amazon. So I'm not too surprised that they've uh, been able to put out such good content. Uh, I will say that the, the story and, and the and the show, like I said, it's about eight episodes long. Uh, each episode ranges, and then the first episode's like an hour and five minutes. Every episode after that's between like 45 and like 55 minutes, somewhere falls yeah. in that range. Uh, but as as I'm watching it, you know, they they really develop his character really well, Jack Ryan. Uh, you know, just to see who he is, where he came from. Uh, what he's doing now there are some issues I do have with the story uh, there's a character that they really start building up he's kind of a side character mm-hmm. and you're like oh this is really interesting it's different and it literally has not a single thing to do with the overall story mm-hmm. um, there's a little part where it kind of crosses over with another story for for a brief like two three minutes mm-hmm. and then it never crosses over again and his character and, and his job that he was doing on the show and everything like, like i was like okay this could really cross over and be kind of something cool so you know let's see how this goes and at one point it, it takes a story down you know the path that you figure his story go and then it just ends it just it's ends. Like, like bye it, like it, there's no like it's a satisfying like i guess end to his story kind of but mm you could have taken him completely out of the, the show 
and, and not miss the thing. There would have been nothing missing. Like, why have a character like that if he's never going to have any role to play mm. in the grander overall story of everything? So that was kind of d- disappointing. I mean, don't get me wrong. The story that they were putting, uh, that they were doing with him, makes sense. You know, he he was really, he he was a soldier who, uh, the killing of these people, whether they're you know. Uh, terrorists or not mm-hmm. was kind of eating up at him a little bit like you know he's killing people you know yeah, and, like that doesn't weigh on any like well on your conscience yeah exactly so, and, and so I liked that story it's just when it ended and it was kind of like okay so what was the point of that so that was kind of upsetting and then the villain of the of the show the overall the big villain of the show the big bad mm-hmm. uh, he was really interesting really interesting character that solid snake where I, I really believe that they, they missed an opportunity to really dive even more into his backstory on why he became the villain that he became. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you kind of get hints of it, but you don't see the transition. Like, he goes to prison one time, and then he comes out of prison, and that's it. Like, or mm-hmm. He goes to prison, and then somebody visits him in prison, and he's like, don't worry, uh, when I get out, everything's going to be different. And then that's it. Like, you don't, yeah. like, you don't really understand what changed him exactly like yeah. we know what happened in his life but prior to that part of being in prison he never blamed anybody you know or or anybody for what happened yeah, and then all of a sudden happened. it just happens and that was kind of upsetting so there are a couple little areas that i think they could have done a little bit better on but i, I think as the story progresses as the mm. the the show goes on i definitely think we'll see them you know expand and and definitely take better care of the story uh, but overall, if you're a fan of of that that type of story, you know that espionage type of story, mm-hmm. check this out. Modern, much more modern than the old Jack Ryan movie, yeah. you know, because obviously they kind of make it uh, more relevant with the idea of Middle Eastern terrorists and stuff like that. So, yeah. but again, uh, great show. I, I definitely plan on watching it again because I really, really liked it. Nice. Uh, yeah, so good. On to Castle Rock. On to Castle Yeah, I still got to watch that. I've I'm, watched I'm, the first episode. I haven't watched anymore. I'm waiting for it to finish. Like, I'm waiting for season one to be done. Mm-hmm. And I'll just watch it all. I guess that kind of makes sense. Because, I, I mean, it's only Hulu. It's not like it's going to disappear anytime soon. True. So, True. Take that for what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, let's jump into some geek news. hear that one dollar a month people you hear it <laughs> all right so i only have one thing to talk about in the geek news geek stuff area of the show uh there's a few news stories i want to talk about before we get into the meat and potatoes this episode bob has been cast as captain marvel <laughs> <laughs> wait what <laughs> it was all a ploy <laughs> uh so it chapter two yay uh is in full production i believe jessica chastain has finished her her uh, filming of the movie, she's actually, I think she posted a picture on her Instagram or something like that about a week about a week or so ago. A week ago. About a week ago. So uh, she's, I'm pretty sure, is, is done with her, her filming. So she's gone. However, up until this point, we haven't seen the titular, the t- titular, titular, the titty, the titty, the, the, titty. the titular character, the titty character. <laughs> um, <laughs> Penis wise, <laughs> Pennywise. We haven't seen him up until recently, and the first photo of Pennywise has made its way online for it chapter two, uh, and he's sitting atop a Paul Bunyan statue, uh, which is actually kind of an important moment uh, in uh, the story, from what I what I understand. I've never read the book, but I was kind of reading mm. some things online where they're like, uh, this is kind of like a big moment where, you know, like it's ripped straight out of the story where he's sitting on top of this statue, which is actually a pretty big statue within Stephen King's universe because, you know, he he's focused on it in the past in his books. So that's yeah. kind of interesting and cool. So, yeah. You did a good job there. Thanks. You did a good job. Thanks. I've read I've almost everything Stephen King. Yeah. So you did a good job. You did a good job. I, I mean, is that true? Like, yeah. Because yeah. okay. everything revolves around Dairy Man, so. Okay. All right, all right. Good, good talk. Thanks yeah. Thanks for the more You're insight there. You're welcome. Was, You're welcome. I was You're really welcome. hoping that you'd have a little more insight. No, but. Well, I mean, it It just is what it is. Like it, you, you, <laughs> ne- you, you said nothing that I couldn't say because oh, okay. you know I'm really good at describing shit. Yeah, yeah, true. So um, I had this interesting conversation with a guy we work with, okay. Cam- Cameron. I know he doesn't listen or anything, but... um. We were talking about post Avengers four today because mm. we were talking about your trivia question that you gave out. Yeah, and uh, you'll like his answer. Actually, I didn't know his answer. 
He gave you a little fun fact back at you. Oh, okay. You want me to spoil it for you? No, nah, I can see it tomorrow. Okay. Um, but he was talking about Galactus and s- stuff like that. I was like, ah, uh, yeah, the Galactus will probably be a big bad with the Fox deal. But the next storyline I could see, Civil War Two. Yeah, I could see that happening at like, some point. I don't think it's going to happen until... Not, like, immediately, but no. that could be the next major... Like, you can see the seeds starting to be planted now. Maybe. In Infinity... Or Infinity War 4. Avengers 4. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We're not talking about Marvel today. That was last You're week. You're not talking we about Marvel. We talked about Marvel. that last week. Okay. Yeah, man, Hawkeye still sucks. <laughs> Fuck off, Hawkeye. I hope you die in this one. All right, let's get into the multiverse here. For for five dollars a month, people, we can make that noise with our buttholes. So the DC Universe has officially got a release date uh, that is coming out, as well as Titans, as well as a whole bunch more information on DC Universe, which I am freaking psyched yeah. about. Last... Adding it to your long list of subscriptions. <laughs> yes, last week <laughs> uh, there was uh, a, a, a big YouTube uh, live um, um episode or whatever you want to call it hosted by everybody's favorite kevin smith now he was there it was literally like three hours long it was kind of ridiculous how long this thing was but essentially what they did was they sat down and they talked to a lot of the people that are going to be involved with the dc universe app or or streaming service and uh really dive into what this service is going to be bringing everybody Mm -hmm. uh why is it worth you know throwing 80 dollars down a year for this service and you know, first off, they're going to have a daily news show that is dedicated solely to all things DC, whether it's movies, TV, comics, games, and, and anything. Anything DC related. Action it's going figures. To be. Now, they already have kind of a daily show like that on YouTube, mm. but it's kind of just moving over to the app now. And that's where you're going to get it. And I think it's going to, they are, they're, they've, uh, added a whole bunch of new crew to the show. So you have uh, John Barrowman, who played uh, Malcolm Merlin, the Dark Arrow on the Arrowverse. Uh, You have uh, Tiffany Smith, who's been part of that for almost day one, but she's a a podcaster and stuff like that. If you've ever watched Collider or listened to Collider, she's been on there quite often. Uh, Let's see, who else is there? There's a couple other people I can't think of, but there's a bunch of other people that are going to be part of the show. And then uh, the big introduction was that Kevin Smith's daughter, Harley Quinn Smith, actually has her first like real job. Like They were kind of making fun of it, that she's going to be one of the hosts on this mm-hmm. show. So, uh, you know, wh- what's better than, you know, a child's name being Harley Quinn being on a DC show kind of mm-hmm. makes sense, you know? Something you strive for your daughter. Yeah, that's what I strive for my daughter. Yes, my daughter's name is Harley Quinn as well. Um, and P- pre-Suicide pre-suicide Squad. Pre-Suicide Squad. And, uh, that's, a, that's a big thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I can always point that out because it was before Suicide Squad was even announced that we named my daughter that, so. Yeah, the comic. The comic, of yeah, course. Yeah, yes, yes. This was decided in 1947. Uh, Harley Quinn didn't come out until the 90s. Exactly. But before Suicide Squad. <laughs> Way before Suicide Squad. All right. Uh, so what else do they get? we're going to have? Uh, they want to have new original content on their service weekly. So uh, their first content that they're dropping, original content, mm. is going to be Titans, which... Uh, releases on the app on October 12th. However, if you happen to be at New York City Comic Con on, I believe, October 3rd or 2nd, they're going to be sh- debuting the first episode mm. there. But then it's going to drop on the app on the 12th. And then every Friday thereafter, they're going to have new episodes, I think up to 10 or 12 episodes. And their goal is, I guess, once that ends, they're going to have another show pick up and keep going mm-hmm. from there. And every week they're going to have at least one original new co- piece of content on their app, which I think is great. I mean, you're mm-hmm. going to be paying money for it, might as well get it. Get something good, you know, get something new is nice, you know, obviously Young Justice is going to be coming. We have Titans, Doom Patrol, Swamp Thing, the Harley Quinn cartoon. Your uh, boy. So they have a lot that to offer. I just can't wait to see it cuz I want to eat it all up like I ah, watch it all. Like, <laughs> you want to motorboat it. Yeah, motorboat the crap out of it. Uh, then it's going to have a whole bunch of old content as well. So at launch you're going to see a lot of the original Batman because it is launching. I didn't say this yet. On September 15th, which is Batman Day. So September 15th is going to launch on Batman Day. They're going to have a whole bunch of Batman content like the original Batman's, the Dark Knight, like you know, that kind of stuff they're going to have on the app to stream. They said that every month things are going to be removed and added 
you know, in, in a cycle. So, you, you know, there's always going to be something mm. changing on the app, which is nice. Uh, they're going to have a bunch of cartoons, Justice League cartoon from the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, Batman the Animated Series is going to be on there, which that is probably what I am most excited about. Uh, the original Wonder Woman show with Linda Carter. You have Lois and Clark, the advent, the new adventures of Superman from the, the mid-90s. Like So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be on there. The, the Superman 1, 2, and 3 from the 70s and 80s. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I can't sell it any more than what they did, but mm. if you're a DC fan, this is probably the best bang for your buck, anything mm. DC, because not only do you get all this cool movie and TV show media, but you're going to get comics on there as well. Yeah. Not only are you going to get free comics to, to read and kind of watch because you can kind of turn it on and it'll kind of... Yeah, just do its thing. Do its thing, and, and, and the pages will turn for you, but you can, you can view it different ways. You can view the whole page. You can view it frame by frame. You can have it where it automatically just turns each page for you as you're reading through it. You can do that, um, and, and there's going to be a whole bunch of old comics on there, but then you're going to be able to buy new comics as well. Mm. So you're going to be able to have your whole library that you can start buying. If you're somebody who buys comics digitally, you're going to be able to buy them there digitally as well. I think you're trying to sell it to me. I, I'm trying to sell it to everybody here. because I, I have an app for price. that, though. Yeah, but this is going to be a better app. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they have a community where you can actually, you know, sit down and, and like, message it, fans of DC, you know, DC Universe and everything like that. So I tell you what, uh, awesome, awesome deal. Uh, the, I think the coolest thing about it is you can be watching, you know, a movie on your TV and then on your tablet, you could be talking to people on the app about the, what you're watching at that point in time. Uh, so you can have and, it on two on devices your phone, at once. You can be reading a comic. You can only have it on two devices at once. Does that mean like simultaneously? So like if it's on your TV and on your phone, you can't have like it on your tablet. Correct. Or if you turn it off on your TV, you can turn it on your tablet. You have to turn off your TV, you can watch okay. it on your tablet, and then your phone. Um, if, it, if you want to move from your phone to your TV and keep it on your tablet, you can move what's on your phone to your TV, but you'll still have it on your tablet. So that's... That's cool. So so kind of like Netflix. like Similar you, to you Netflix. Can, yeah. You can have it everywhere, but you can only really have like two screens. Yeah, you can only have two screens going at one time. Yeah. You know, and they can both be on different things, but mm -hmm. there can only be two screens going on at one time. No, that's cool. So uh, they did announce that hopefully... In the near future, it will have the ability to get the. You will have the ability to get these apps on your Playstations, your Xboxes, yeah. and stuff like that. As of right now, no. They said it's just to to stay tuned because it should be coming. As I'm of sure, right that's now. a hard thing to port. Yeah, and you know you got to make deals with Microsoft and Sony yeah. and stuff like that as well. But I believe it is on Fire Stick. You know, for so Amazon, you know, products. So your Fire Stick, or your Fire TV, whatever, and Apple TV. And then it's on Android devices, Apple devices, stuff like that. So that's where you can get it right now. And I think you can get it on Windows too. I think. I think. I'm just gonna wait. So I'm getting it. I'm gonna uh, wait till Titans so. is about three fourths of the way done. Yeah. Then I'll get it. Then I'll binge watch it. Go from there. I, I wonder how that's gonna have like work. I, I'm wondering if they're gonna kind of do something like Hulu does because they didn't mm -hmm. talk about this. I, I meant to meant to message it like to, to tweet them because they're having people tweet them through the show and they were answering questions. And at one point, I, I wanted to ask this question and I just was like too lazy to. But <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> but I want to know like, is it gonna be like Hulu because Hulu not their original content, but you know how like I'll take This Is Us for instance. This Is Us will release on on NBC the next week it'll or the next day it'll be on Hulu mm -hmm. three weeks later it'll drop off and they'll only keep yeah. three weeks of the show on there at a time I'm wondering if they're going to do that with their content and then once the season is over then they'll put it all up there that mm -hmm. might be a smart thing to do for them to try and get subscribers it might mm -hmm. piss some people off but you know it's yeah. about making money and not just pleasing it. Like, you want to yeah. please people but you also want to make money That's yeah ultimately you're here to make money exactly make, really give two fucks less about the customers yeah, ninety percent of the time. That's true. Not us. Not us. We give a shit about. We your love opinion. you guys. We will individually make out with you unless you and have you, an STD. And you know how much we love you. Just listen to this ad here. Hello, sir. What can I do for you? Howdy there, partner. I'm in the market for one of them new internet radio show T-shirts. I hear so much about on them app guys. T-shirt, you say? Yeah. One that'll catch the eye, of my lovely lady friend. You know what? I think I may have something right up your alley. Oh, do tell! You see, we have this awesome Hanes tagless tee 
with the slick logo of Nerd Talkalypse Podcast Network on the front, with all the awesome shows listed on the back. Nerd Talkalypse Podcast, Fandom Vibe, and even Bridging the Geekdoms. Well, I'll be a horse's patoot. That's right, and you can get that all for the low cost of $17.99 at teespring.com, as well as coffee mugs, stickers, tank tops, and hoodies. I'm going to have to get me one of them stickers for the back of my pick up truck. <laughs> That's excellent, man. Just log in to teespring.com slash shop slash network and order yours today. Yeah! But wait, why did I walk into a store if you're going to send me to a website? Okay, so... All right. <laughs> See our love for you? It's silent. All you could hear was our heartbeat. Or you could hear that ad that we, you know, put in there at that moment, yeah. point in time. So. It was silent. I'm going to leave some silence in there. Post-production. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so staying within the, uh, in the multiverse, Birds of Prey. That movie's coming out, supposedly. They say it's coming out. They say they're going to be making it soon. But here's the crazy thing. You know, we know Harley Quinn's going to be in there, so Margot Robbie's going to be playing Harley Quinn within that movie. Mm -hmm. Cool. Margot Robbie's hot. She's good as Harley Quinn. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But it seems that WB and DC is eyeing Lady Gaga for a role for this movie. Now, the crazy thing about it is they're looking at like her for like Huntress or something like that, mm -hmm. which I'm totally down with. But she, we haven't seen her in a movie yet, like a real, like yeah. full length, like leading role movie until this movie that's coming out. That's uh, 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 I can't remember uh, the name. It's with Bradley Cooper. Yeah, though. you just yeah. So you know, that, <laughs> that, that, everybody knows what we're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, all, all you nerds and geeks up there know exactly what we're talking about. But that movie looks fucking good. It does look good. I mean, even though I'm not a big country music fan, neither it am I. Looks good. Actually, we know I'm the exact opposite of a country music yeah. fan. Anyway, says the guy who's dating a southern girl. <laughs> But they're they're eyeing her up, and, and the crazy thing is, is they supposedly offered her money like two or three months ago, and she was like, no, no thank you. And they have circled back around because they want her this badly. Mm -hmm. So my guess is somebody within WB or DC saw that movie, and mm -hmm. they were like, she's damn good. We want her in our universe before she goes to Marvel or something like yeah. that. So who knows? They they offered her more money, possibly a bigger role, possibly mm -hmm. a bigger, you know, more to do. I don't know. Uh, that that's all we've heard so far about it. So yeah. I'm sure at some I mean, point, once the news gets out like that, it usually means they're getting close to the deal being done. Because mm -hmm. uh, one of two things usually happen: you have something like a Ben Affleck thing that happens where holy crap, he's cast as Batman, and that's official. And then you have the people like, oh, he sucks, he's gonna suck, and you have people, oh, he's gonna be awesome, and you yeah, you, know, you go back and forth, or you're gonna have something like just what happened not even a week ago with the Todd Phillips Joker movie, where it was announced that. Alec Baldwin had joined the cast as Thomas Wayne, uh, nice. playing you know Bruce Wayne's father, and then two days later he was like, "No, I dropped out of that. I'm not in that." So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry for that fart noise there, but damn. But, I mean, <laughs> you you usually have those two things. You either have it's like it's announced, like boom, this is really happening, or the announcement or the the rumor that came out about the person being in it is either true or they're in the middle of finishing negotiations and i think with like the alec baldwin thing it ended up being where his schedule what couldn't work out with it mm -hmm. uh with lady gaga i mean she doesn't really do much of anything but sing so yeah i mean you can work around that i'm though. sure that they can yeah they can find a way yeah i mean depending I on how big her role is you yeah. know i wouldn't hate her in something like that no no i'm like, I, look i'm really interested to see her in that mo in this movie coming up with bradley cooper uh, so i you know i can only imagine what what she could do as a yeah comic book character and the Huntress I mean Huntress is uh, Huntress is a cool character a mm. uh, different type of character uh, oh, oh Black Canary was the other one they were either going to it's either for Black Canary or Huntress is what mm. what the, the report says um, Huntress I think could be a cool character for her. it's different for her uh, I mean well anything's different for her really uh, <laughs> Black Canary could work but here's my thing anybody you get for Black Canary you have to you they they're then gonna have to cast an Oliver Queen a a, a Green Arrow because yeah. you need to get somebody who's gonna play off of each other well you know mm. because chemistry between those two is kind of huge because you know Laurel Lance uh, yeah Laurel and 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 Oliver Queen they're a couple you know yeah. they need to have that. Lo and behold, we don't, we don't know that she has been cast as Black Canary and Bradley Cooper's The Green Arrow. Oh, snap. <laughs> what, what, oh, man, what would Marvel fanboys do if they heard that, that Bradley Cooper, Rocket Raccoon, is also in the DC Universe yeah, Green Arrow? Right. Like, what would people do? They'd lose Just their like, fucking minds. <laughs> uh, so speaking of Thomas Wayne, which we just did about Alec Baldwin, uh, the 
current Thomas Wayne within the DC film universe, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, has come out and stated that he wants to play Lobo in a DC film uh, mm. at some point in time. Now, I, I've seen a lot of people like freaking out, like, no, he's too old, uh, that would suck. Honestly, I don't think that's a bad role. Yeah. I mean, Jeffrey D. Morgan, if you don't know who he is, he plays Negan on The yeah. Walking Dead. Uh, again, he was also Thomas Wayne in Batman vs. Superman. Martha. And... <laughs> And this is where we've all, this is where all of these secret underground inside airsoft jokes come from. But again, he, you know, I, I think he would be a great choice. And he actually has somebody backing him in his corner. Dwayne Johnson, Black hell, Adam himself, hell is, yeah. is backing him and saying he would be a hell of a, you know, hell of a Lobo. And I agree. Hey, you don't argue with the, the look, five-time look, my, WWE champion. My top two choices for, for Lobo before Jeffrey Dean Morgan would either be... Um, Jason Momoa, Aquaman, or Dwayne Johnson, uh, the, the Black Adam. Yeah. So, so next, uh, Jeffrey D. Morgan. Why the hell not? Yeah. No, you just have Dwayne the Rock Johnson and, and, in various and, different <laughs> roles in the DC universe. But Jeffrey D. Morgan, like his persona, his the way he talks. Yeah, like, he would carry the he role. He is fucking Lobo. Like I can't believe I didn't see it until I heard him talk about it. I'm like, damn, it, like damn, like it would like, work perfectly. Like like. like Damn! Damn! Sorry, headphone users. So that's kind of cool. I hope that happens because I really want to see it happen. Mm -hmm. I do. I want to see it happen. So, That'd be uh, cool to watch. hear that DC Universe or DC Films or WB Warner Brothers. Get hear on. that ass munchers. And then the final thing I'm going to talk about in news: uh, Wesley Snipes. So yes. Wesley Snipes, we all know him in the comic book world from the movies Blade, Blade Two, and Blade Trinity. Uh, he played Blade. No, the, no fucking way. The vampire man. hunter, Blade. Uh, you know, there's been talk ever since he got out of prison a couple years ago <laughs> that, you know, like, oh, he should come back and play Blade. And now Blade mm -hmm. is in the hands of Disney and Marvel Studios again. It no longer belongs to, I don't remember who had it before. I don't know. Whoever had it before, but Sony. maybe Sony. I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. not sure who had it before, but it is back in Marvel Studios' hands. There's been a lot of talk that they were going to, like, there was at one point people thought that Blade was going to be introduced in Daredevil Season 2. Uh, there was talk that he was uh, actually going to be introduced in uh, Spider-Man at one point, like, way back, like, early, like, rumors of, mm. of Spider-Man Homecoming. They thought that... That, <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, you know, there was a lot of talk like this was going to happen, mm. like Blade was going to show up, and he never has. Now, obviously... Wesley Snipes is like 50 some years old, you know. Like, uh, he could still do it. He could. He I'm, just I'm not... he just got out of jail, man. He's been racking them them weights. And I'm not saying that he can't do it and he has been Blade, which is awesome. Uh, but don't you think you'd want to go somewhat younger sometime? Like, you know, I saw some some pretty cool fan art of like uh, John Boyega, you know, it, like dressed up as Blade. Mm. Like, I think it'd be cool. I don't know if he has the personality for it, but I was like, hey, damn, he he looks good. Like he would play, mm. you know, that role really well. I think. Uh, just you know, he's an actor, so he should be able to change how he is. You know. Yeah. So you know that that was one name uh, that came to mind. Um, probably my my first choice would have been if it was if they were to cast somebody brand new would have been Michael B. Jordan, but unfortunately mm. you can't because he was in the MCU already. Uh, so that's unfortunate. So, Will Smith. Oh, but Jayden getting Smith. back onto the Wesley Snipes thing here, uh, he kind of was doing an interview the other day and talking about how he is currently helping develop two possible Blade uh, projects for Marvel Studios. That's um, pretty cool. He was saying how like one of them, you know, if they allow it, because he, he was like, you know, first off, this one is like just crazy. Like, probably not going to let us do it because it's so out, out, outrageous and crazy. But if they did, people are going to love it. And this other one, people would love that one also. It's not quite as crazy as, as mm. the other one, but people but would still, still love it. But it's still knocking futs. So the fact that, you know, he's he's involved makes me believe that they they may bring him in to play mm. Blade again. And again, I'm not against it. Yeah. I'm not against him. Well, I know he's a little older, but um, as long as he's not a dick like he was on for Blade Trinity, because I don't mm. know if you've ever heard the stories of how he acted as a, a with with uh, just as a human being mm. with people on that movie. Where he's just an asshole. He was a complete asshole. Like he had like m like uh, uh, like names made up for Ryan Reynolds and Jessica Biel that were just like he was just an asshole to him about it. Like you know there were. Just, he like was it was not, need, not needed. Yeah, like he was an asshole. Like Patton Oswalt, you know, he's he's kind of big in the nerd community. He played on mm. Agents of Shield and stuff like that. But uh, you know, he he told the story one time on some podcast I was listening to, and 
he almost quit acting basically because of it. Like he was like so like uh, sick of the antics of Wesley Snipes. Like mm-hmm. he couldn't believe how somebody who's such a big star could act like that. Yeah. You know, and he was a dick. And I always heard rumors about that. And I always like you could even tell when he when you know in movies that he was mm-hmm. a complete asshole. Yeah. So believe it or not, outside of this podcast, we're not real assholes. No, no, we're actually one kinda... of us are. <laughs> yeah, me. It's me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, again, I'm I'm all for seeing some Blade. I, I think it's going to be more Netflix if they were to do anything with. Blade. I, I was just going to ask you that. I don't think they're going to put it into the film universe. Was, but again, I'm all for like, what like okay we vampires aren't big right now. Vampires kind of nah. died off a little bit. <laughs> that died know? when Twilight died. It, well, exactly. Twilight was kind of like the thing that you know stu- put the final stake into the vampire you know war right there <laughs> ah, i see what you did there you know and, and there people were like well i guess you know we've come to this part where vampires twinkle i guess we're done with it yeah. you know now we're in zombies <laughs> yeah and, and zombies and, but zombies are already on like the yeah they're on the their decline. way huh? so it only kind of makes sense that it comes back up with vampires and i mm. think blade could be the hell of a hell of a way to like here vampires yeah. are back you know we have the Anne rice uh, um, Vampire Chronicles. It's going to be made into a TV show, so that's happening. You have if we have Blade, mm-hmm. it's going to come back in a big way, I think, with vampires. And I'm a huge vampire buff, so I'm all yeah. for it. I was going to say I, I would prefer him in a TV show or like yeah. a Netflix series. I don't think Netflix. he. I don't think he's too well known for no, like he, not right now in the cinematic say, I'll universe. I'll say this: he's not. He. I don't think he's well known with the current generation yeah. of. Like the young generation of comic book fans, you know, mm-hmm. us older ones like me, yeah. you know, and then people my age and older, and maybe even your age, mm-hmm. will know who yeah. Blade is. They'll know because of those movies. People loved those movies. Yeah. And, but like, I, I think he like if if you're going to do a Blade movie, it's going to be gory. It has to be like, yeah. and it's going to be bad. Like, exactly. it's not going to be kid friendly. Exactly. And you did the Punisher on Netflix, and, and that was gory as shit. Yeah. So, this, so it, only it would sense. only fit. Yeah. You can't put him in the cinematic universe and be like, oh, yep, here's a full-fledged zombie killing, or not zombie killing, vampire killing movie. Yeah, the only the only problem I have with it is Sony owns the rights to Morbius and are making mm-hmm. a Morbius movie. Fucking and, dumb. Uh, Morbius the Living Vampire against Blade. Like, oh, come on. That, that would, would be, be so badass. Like, there was a... I remember back in the 90s, the Spider-Man animated series mm. in the 90s, they had an episode arc. Like, because they usually did, like, two or three episode arcs mm. on that show. And there was one where Blade was hunting down Morbius, and I just thought it was badass. And I would love to see it, uh, you know, in live action. Yeah. Cool, but it, it won't happen because Sony has to be a bunch of douchebags and hold all the rights. Like, no, Marvel, you can't have them. You can't, you can't no. It's like, come on, go make some money with Marvel. Like, come on, come on. How, how much? Come on. How much money do you think, or, or how long do you think it's going to take before Marvel, Disney, just throws money at Sony? Like, just give us the fucking characters. Like, here's a dollar. We will give you your dollar amount. Look, I, I'm not one to say this. I'm not one to say this. Sony, I would say, is three flops. Three flops away from saying, you know what? Let's Here. work with Marvel completely or take the characters back. That's what I would say. I would say three flops away. That and means Venom we- has to flop. Uh, the, the Black Cat and... Or not Black... Yeah, Black Cat. Silver Sable. I don't know. Whatever. Silver... Whatever it was. Silver hmm. and Black or whatever they're calling it. That needs to flop. And Morbius needs to flop. So if those three flop... Probably. They'll probably be like, look, we're only successful with Spider-Man and it only got really successful again because of Marvel... So why don't we just let them use all the characters, or let's just say, hey, Marvel, how much do you want to spend to get these characters back? Yeah. That's what I see. Because like, it, it's just a matter of time. It's not an if, it's a when. And again, I, I, I'd never want to tell people to don't go see a, a comic book movie, because I want to see more and more mm. and more and more. But that but Venom movie looks Venom's horrible. Venom's probably going to be atrocious. It looks horrible. But, but, we, but you know, there's reports coming out that's saying that it's it's going to be like one of the biggest openings in October. Is it October? Yeah, I, I mean, what's it going against though? Is it, that's the big thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. I look. I, and it's also probably weighing on it's Venom. Like, just people are going to see it because it's Venom. And you know, they got Tom Hardy, so they probably yeah. think, oh, Tom Hardy. You know, it's not going to be god awful. But I, I honestly think that. It's not too long, because, I mean, they bought Star Wars. They made their money back with Star Wars. It's, they're going to make their money back from the Fox deal within two or three years, easily. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I figured Sony, probably within the next five years, if not before then, would be the next target for Marvel. Probably. It was like, here, here, how much money do you want for those characters? 
how much? We got all the fucking money in the world. How much do you want for it? Yeah. I then know. we'll be covering it here in two to three years. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it happens. All right. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this episode. Cock and balls of the episode. <laughs> so we are going to talk about the upcoming movies for the rest of the year. From uh, the beginning of September to the end of the year. Movies December that, 31st. The movies that I believe, that we believe are probably going to be the must-see, the, the go-to movies uh, that you need to see before the end of the year. Ooh. Um, and you know, there's obviously a shit ton of movies coming out. I have not, I did not take the time to pull all of the movies. I literally pulled one, uh, about one every week, a couple, you know, some weeks there's a few that are, that are coming out that I pulled, um, roughly one every week. There's a few weeks where nothing really is coming out, but I pulled enough movies that I'm like, you know what? These are movies I think everybody needs to see and we're going to talk about them and go from there. So starting with this coming Friday, uh, September 7th, and this is pretty much in your realm, buddy, the nun. Yeah, I can't wait for that. So it's the spinoff from the Conjuring series. Tell me a little bit about it. Okay, so anybody who's familiar with the Conjuring series, uh, you know the Conjuring is the following of the Warren couple. Sure. And their adventures through real... Uh, they're based on real life events, but they're the the Hollywood versions of them, basically. Mm-hmm. So you have Annabelle, which is the Raggedy Ann doll in real life that's possessed and has killed people, quote-unquote. I don't know. I have never been there, never really read up on it other than the movies. And then there's also the Crooked Man from Conjuring 2. And now you have the nun who has been, like, the underlying villain, quote-unquote, from the first, like, the overall story who's been hunting the Warren, or specifically the wife, but I can't think of her name. So it's nice to see that it's finally getting its own movie. It's supposed to be super scary. I don't know. I'll be there. I'll be seeing it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm I, not going to see it. So that's, you know, that's how it is because it looks stupid. Yeah. I've never seen any of The Conjuring. Yeah. How many movies are in The Conjuring? Like, you have The Conjuring and you have The Nun. You, don't you have something else? Is uh, there- you have The Conjuring, Annabelle, The Conjuring 2, Annabelle 2, and then The Nun. And okay. Conjuring 3 is somewhat in production. They're making a universe around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have heard. So... Ridiculous, ridiculous. Okay, uh, the following week, next week, 9, 14, September 14th, is The Predator. Look, uh, I'll probably see it. I'm going to see it. Uh, Shane Black is directing it. Uh, he's taking a shot at the Predator fil- film universe. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up to, what was it, 2012? We had a Predator movie come out, I think. Robert Rodriguez maybe directed I don't know I I quit watching him after like the 90s I actually don't hate that movie I actually think it's a good movie like you know they go to a planet like all these uh, uh, you know earth soldier like soldiers like people from earth are put onto this planet where predators just hunt them and kill them like that's what it is I thought it was pretty cool cool Mm -hmm. concept definitely better than Predator 2 which was the Danny um the Danny Glover Predator, you know, and it was crazy. I've always looked at it like this: like the first Predator, you have, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you, you know, you have yeah, Carl Weathers, you have Jesse Ventura, like you yeah. have these big fucking manly men going yeah. up against a Predator, and, and Arnold comes out victorious, you know? Yeah, like fucking crazy shit. And then Predator Two is like, yeah, you got Danny Glover from Lethal Weapon, you know, the old black guy, you know? Mm. <laughs> and, and, and somehow shit happens. And, and uh, 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 Gary Busey, if I'm not mistaken, is in Predator Two. <laughs> so like, you like. Like, what, that, what are you doing? Like, come on, come on. That's a fucking all star cast right there. <laughs> you, you go from the the Arnold to to this, like you know. Oh, so, how the mighty have fallen! <laughs> it was it was ridiculous, you know. Uh, and then well, you know, obviously the second Predator with that big Easter egg. That's probably the best mm. thing in that movie where you see a skull of an alien. You're like, holy shit! It's in the same universe as Alien, you know. So that that was kind of cool. Uh, then, you know, we had the Alien vs. Predator movies that came mm-hmm. out, which, you know, weren't, weren't exactly about Predators, but, you know, Predators mm-hmm. were pretty prevalent in it, especially AVP, the second AVP, Requiem, I think is what it was called. Uh, yeah, that was pretty big uh, for the Predator. And then we had the 2012 movie that I was talking about, which I thought was good. Like, I mm-hmm. think people give it a lot of shit, but it's actually a good movie. It's not bad. For some reason, this one, though, for me, like, the trailers it just doesn't aren't look good. doing it for me. What, what it is is we have the regular Predator who has been a villain like an overpowered villain always yeah. basically but there's a stronger one yeah but there's a bigger stronger there's one there's a there's a big brother <laughs> basically es- essentially and that's and, and don't get me wrong I'm a huge fan of Shane Black like Shane Black speaking of Lethal Weapon he wrote Lethal Weapon you know mm. back in the 80s and then you know he went on to do some great things he did Kiss Kiss Bang Bang he did Iron Man 3 that that's probably his biggest like flub, disappointment biggest disappointment or flub in my opinion uh then he did the you know the the nice guys 
and you know, I mean, he's a whole bunch of other mm-hmm. stuff, but you know, I'm just kind of mentioning some of his big things. So now he's doing Predator, the Predator, you know, and I should be more excited because I like his work. Mm-hmm. I just there's something I can't get. It just it's a movie that he shouldn't have done. Maybe that we don't really need. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, the the cast, you know, Sterling K. Brown from This Is Us, uh, also Black Panther, and Olivia Munn. You know, like mm-hmm. she's in it as well. So uh, looking hot as she always does. You know, even though ever since she's gotten older, I think she's gotten some work done because she doesn't look as hot as she used to on Attack of the Show. So I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> she really hasn't. Like she it's, must have did something. I think she got work done because I mean normally when women age they stay pretty good looking unless they get work done and mm. yeah she yeah uh also well she's still well, good she's still good looking just not like she used to look since you brought it up uh rest in spaghetti g4 never forget <laughs> see you up there man uh, it's all comcast's fault you know comcast bought them and then they were like yeah oh, we'll make a g4 tech tv and then they're like uh ah, no, and then we'll just it. then we'll just put on cops for 24 <laughs> 7 Exactly, G4 or, or, Tech TV with cops on it all the time. Or or uh, American Ninja Warrior, yeah. one of the two. We yeah. never had gaming on there anywhere. It was ridiculous. I don't okay. Sessler, I still listen to it. <laughs> all all right. right, anyway. Uh, let's see, on September 21st, we get Jack Black's newest movie called The House with a Clock in Its Walls. <laughs> uh, now, 10-year-old Lewis goes to live with his uncle in a creaky old house that contains a mysterious tick-tock noise. When Lewis accidentally awakens the dead, the town's sleepy facade magically springs to life with a secret world of witches and warlocks. I honestly kind of want to see this. I know my kids want to see it. My Chase, he wants to see it. My, yeah. my oldest son wants to definitely see it. My, my two younger ones aren't too crazy about it, but he wants to see it, and I'm not like against it. Like, I'm always for that kind of weird, like, yeah, the wacky stuff, and stuff like that. Uh, the special effects don't look great. Yeah, uh, I but, think that's why I don't really care to see it. Yeah. Not, well, I mean, I don't have kids, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and that's a that's a pretty big thing there. I, I kind of it kind of works for me because there's sometimes mm. movies like that where I'm just kind of like, eh, I could take it or leave it. And my kids mm. are like, I'll see. It. They're like, all right, I guess I'll see yeah, it. You, you have know? an excuse to go I, see it. Exactly. See, I, I, the special effects. If the special effects look better, but then again, it is a trailer. They probably will be better. Don't yeah. know why I turned away and <laughs> I kept talking, but whatever. Um, but the special effects will probably look better in the in the movie itself. Hopefully, but uh, but again, I'm not I'm not looking for much. Like yeah, yeah, just if if I can go and enjoy myself, if my son really likes it, it's a win. You yeah, know, that's kind of. I mean, it's Jack it. Black, so it's going to be somewhat entertaining. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Kate Blanchett is in it also with Jack Black, uh, and that's about all for the big names in that movie. So that's that. Uh, Nine twenty eight. I don't have anything. Uh, September twenty eighth. I just didn't see anything worthy to mention coming out that Rest day. Rest in spaghetti. And then the big movie of October, that's a joke because this isn't the big movie of October, although they are saying it is going to be, is Venom on October 5th. Rest in spaghetti. So Venom, you know, based off the comic book character Venom within the Spider-Man universe. Without Spider-Man. Eddie Brock is a, is a you know, journalist and he goes to investigate something going on in California about the symbiotes and, or as they like to say it in the, in the movie, symbiotes, uh, it's symbiote, damn it. Symbiotes. <laughs> so they go and he goes investigates and he, you know, the symbiote attaches itself to him, uh, known as Venom. And he becomes basically, he's almost like a Hulk character in the movie. Mm-hmm. They make it like he's a Hulk character. You have Venom who is one personality. You have Eddie Brock, which is another personality. And they have to find a way to work together to help defeat, uh, it appears to be the, rampage. uh, riot. Right. Right. Yeah, Why did I say rampage? I don't know, but that's, what's kind of mm. the movie's going to be. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to see it. Yeah. It's a comic book movie. But we're we're going to be there Thursday night. I, I just, <laughs> who I are we kidding? I just don't know, man. I just... I, I, it doesn't I, look good. It doesn't. I don't like. I don't see why people think it looks good. I know that they can clean up some of the CGI prior. Yeah. I do. Uh, but that, I just, that fucking dialogue... Oh, the dialogue's horrible. Oh, God, is it horrible. Like, that story's gonna be bad. Yeah. yeah. Look, people were, you know... I, people say this all the time. Like, I was having a, a, a discussion months ago when they first unveiled the logo for Venom, and mm. I was like, God damn, that logo looks like a two-year-old created it. You know? Somebody's like, that's the logo from the comics, yo! And I'm like, okay, it worked for a comic. It's not working for the movie. <laughs> hey, know? man, I tried real fucking hard with Microsoft Paint, okay? <laughs> I don't come out here and attack you. And then, and then, <laughs> and then you know, the same thing goes on with, with the way that the dialogue is. Mm. You know, people are like, oh, my God, the dialogue's horrible. And there's a moment where he's like, I'll eat your liver, or, you know, like your liver, your brain, whatever he says yeah. at that point. And, and people, it's just like, stop. And people are like, oh, that's straight from the comic book. Again, 
works for comics doesn't necessarily work for movie. Yeah, I mean, just saying. Yeah. There's there's things as adaptations. Uh, th- and the only thing that I will say that this movie has going for it is I like what they've done with the voice of Venom. Mm-hmm. I do like the voice. I think it sounds. It reminds me uh, of what I was. I would picture his voice being when I'm mm-hmm. reading a comic. You know, and and that kind of I like when they do that. You know, and that's gonna be the only thing that's good about the movie. Maybe, unfortunately, but probably unless Tom Hardy just pulls a performance <laughs> of the year out of his ass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next movie, which comes out on October 12th, is Bad Times at the El Royale. Now, you're looking at me like, what the fuck are you looking at? Why would you mention this movie? What the hell is it? So seven strangers, each with a secret to bury, meet at a rundown hotel in Lake Tahoe in the 1960s. You already have my attention. Uh, Over the course of a fateful night, they all get one last shot at redemption before everything goes wrong. So that sounds cool. Like I'm like, okay. No, you have my attention. And I've seen the trailer. Looks badass. Then it has a cast of Chris Hemsworth, uh, John Hamm, Dakota Johnson, and, you know, Jeff Bridges, Nick Offerman. Like, you're looking at, like, Nick Offerman from from, from Parks and Rec. You know, yeah, like, no, come on. Like, no, I can get behind this. Exactly. Like, dude, this movie's going to, I think, it'd be pretty badass. It's going to be a sleeper, I think, in, in October. Mm. And I think it's going to be one of those movies because that's going to, that's right between two big movies, you know, between Venom and the next one we're going to talk about. And I think it's going to be one of those ones that's going to help knock one or the other off. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if Venom isn't too great, this is going to be a movie that people go see. Mm-hmm. If this next movie isn't too great, this is the movie that people are going to go see. I think that's what's going to happen. So, I'm looking forward I to mean, it. It has my attention. Yeah. Uh, the next movie on October 19th, and this has been a movie that ever since they announced it, I've been excited for, and it's crazy because it's a horror film. But but you'd have to be stupid not to be excited for exactly. it. Exactly. Halloween. Yeah. So, uh, Michael Myers is back. You know, I, and just... retconning the entire universe. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he, he's back. Uh, you know, um, it, it, Lori, that's her name, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character. You know, she's back. It's four, this takes place 40 years after the original Halloween. It retcons everything. So anything, any movie that ever came out after Halloween the first Halloween one, one does not exist. Doesn't exist. That does, that's all thrown out the window. That's this a is, what if scenario. This is essentially the sequel to Halloween. Halloween is the sequel to Halloween. So <laughs> they're gonna make a two. They're gonna make the W a two or some shit. I don't know. But there's gonna be two knives at the end. Who knows? But <laughs> that would be dumb. They talking about the damn <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the damn logo and how bad that would look bad. But I'm just looking forward to it because one, they're they're retconning it. Not saying that I hated what came out prior. Um, because my H two O was pretty bad. That was my introduction to Halloween though. That That's one the was crazy thing. Pretty bad. And when I was how old was I? Maybe 11 or 12 when that came out. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, that was... I remember I finally got a TV in my bedroom, okay? I finally... It was my the first time I... Like, Tons not, of porn. Not, I won't say my first TV, because I had, like, a small, like, 13-inch in my room, mm-hmm. but... But you had a real TV. But it was, like, one of those ones that had to have rabbit ears. You couldn't connect a VCR up to it or anything mm-hmm. like that. Like, it literally was... I got Fox 53 on it, and... And, so uh, a lot of Seinfeld. Channel Eleven. Seinfeld so, was watched. Seinfeld, uh, Batman the Animated Series, Power Rangers. Mm. You know, like that's all I could uh, the watch Simpsons. on there. Uh, X Files. Like that's all I could watch on my TV in there, which wasn't bad. There's some pretty damn yeah. good shows. Yeah, no, that was a fire lineup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I finally got like a nice 27 inch TV in my room, you yeah, because my the, grand the my grand was to be played. Yeah, my grandfather bought my mom a new TV, and my mom was like, "Here, put that one in Bob's room." I was like, "Sweet." I got TV. You're like, fuck you, brother. And and I got a VCR. I was like, sweet. I You're like porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the <laughs> locks yourself in your room for three days, comes out, your arm's four times the size it was. <laughs> and my brother worked at Hollywood Video or Blockbuster at the time, mm-hmm. one of the two, because he kind of flip flopped between the two of them at one point. Nice. And uh, he would get screeners, you know, and I don't know, for those of you who don't know what screeners are, screeners were how video stores would, they would get a, a, a VHS called a screener for a movie and they would get the movie so everybody in the store could watch it. However, during the movie at certain times, it would either turn black and white or at the bottom of the screen, a, a, a bar would pop up and scroll across saying, this is a screener, not for sale, blah, 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 mm. all that kind of stuff. That's what a screener is. So that's what people used to get. Uh, or, you know, video store uh, representatives would get to watch the movies before they came out so they could talk about it. So my brother, my brother had this, and I guess they used to just give them away or something like that to the employees after a certain amount of time because my brother then owned Halloween H2O, and it was a screener. So I was like... 
you know, I got this VCR, I got this TV. I was like, I gotta watch something in my room. You know, what do we yeah. gonna watch? My arm's tired. I got no more porn to watch. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm I'm old enough. I could watch a horror film now because like yeah, I've watched horror movies, but like it was always like with my mom and my brother in the living room. And, and you were in the middle of a love <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> or you know, I'd be playing with my toys. So like I wasn't mm-hmm. paying attention to the movie. Playing with your toys. This was like the first like horror movie that I sat down and truly watched. I take that back. Scream was probably the first one that I really sat down and watched. But this was like by myself like this was the first time like mm. by myself i was watching a horror movie in my room door closed lights off like this is <laughs> this is where i i got my love for watching a movie by myself and not no distractions you know mm-hmm. it was halloween h2o regardless of how bad that, that movie, movie is was bad to a 11 12 year old me i was like holy shit like Wow, you know, like, like, and then I went back and watched the rest of the Halloween franchise, you know, because of that movie. And it, it, you know, obviously the first one I've always felt was the best. Um, That's most horror films, though. (laughs) But even like the remakes by Rob Zombie, the first one I thought was fan fucking tastic, man. Like Rob Rob Zombie Zombie did a hell. The second one, not so much. I did not like the second one. I I, I mean, how'd you feel about House of a Thousand Corpses? I did not. No, wait, 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 wait. I did not like House of a Thousand Corpses. No, no, I did not like House of a Thousand Corpses. I liked The Devil's Rejects. That's how it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm, that's weird. Yeah. I like both of them. Yeah. So I'm looking forward for Three from Hell. You yeah. Know, like, I think it'll be. I'm going to have to rewatch the first two, though. So, yeah, I should probably go back and rewatch them before I see it. It's been a while. It's been, what, 10, 15 years? Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. So, like, again, Halloween coming out. <laughs> we, we got way off track here. Uh, <laughs> we have, somehow we ended in Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that's coming out on October 19th. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, all of you are as well. Uh, I think it'll do well in theaters. I think so, too. I think it's going to be this year's it. Yeah, you just know. just because the, the timing and the fact it's Halloween. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and oh, honestly, both, both the movie and the holiday. Like looking through October, um, that's really the only big horror movie in October. That's because they all come out in like fucking February for yeah, some reason. Yeah, because they just don't do well, so they throw them in months that they don't even care about, uh, and they want to have them out on video by that time too. Weird. Uh, nothing on October 26th that I felt worthy of notating and talking about. So we jump into November, and this might be my most anticipated movie of the year, um, if only because of the music. And that is on November 2nd, Bohemian Rhapsody comes out. Tits. I'm uh, happy you said that. I, I cannot wait to see Bohemian Rhapsody. That's going to be awesome. You know, the story of Freddie Mercury and Queen, um, how they became to be such the force that they were in the 70s and 80s and everything like that. I can't wait. You know? We get to see um, Bohemian Rhapsody made. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. We get to see it all made. Um, I, 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 I'm hoping that it, it sticks true to the real story. I don't mm. know the real story. I just hate watching movies and then finding out later that, oh, they, this was just inspired by that. It's not really yeah. how it went. Like, and it's for like, instance, come like, on. I love The Greatest Showman. Mm. However, that's about P.T. Barnum and you know how he created and, and, the, yeah, circus, the circus. And it's very loosely based on how the events actually happened. And that's kind of like, that, that kind of took a little bit away from me for the movie. I really love the movie. And I find out, I'm like, aw. Oh, well, it's still a good movie, you know? Yeah. So I just hope with Bohemian Rhapsody, they kind of keep, you know, as close to the story as possible. And with, you know, uh, the members of the band still alive, I'm sure they yeah. had some input and helped out with it. So Who, Who's playing Fer- Freddie Mercury in the, um, in the film? What's his name? I don't know. Look it up. Jeez. Okay, I'll look it up since you're not. Um, Freddie Mercury is playing Freddie Mercury in the film. <laughs> <laughs> but whoever it is looks damn good. He looks almost yeah, no, identical to Freddie um, Mercury. Rami Malek, yeah, that's right, from uh, that robot show or whatever. <laughs> the guy who lended his face to be in Until Dawn and for PS4. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, he does look good. I, I still think that um, uh, Sacha Baron Conan looks mm. more like Freddie Mercury than he does because mm. Sacha Baron Conan was originally, he actually filmed part of the movie and then yeah. he quit. And then they got Rami Malek in. Now, this movie has gone through a whole bunch of shit, too, because mm. Brian Singer was the, originally the director of the movie, and then there was shit that came out, so he had to leave the movie. Um, you know, So there's a whole bunch of crap behind it. So uh, I just hope it does well. Like, uh, First off, Queen is an amazing band. Mm-hmm. Um you know, the, in, in their story, Freddie Mercury's story is a great story. You know, so it's about time it's made into a fucking movie. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the next week, eleven nine eighteen, November 9th, we have the Girl in the Spider's Web. Now, this is kind of a semi sequel to the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. However, they recasted the main role of journalist uh, 
uh, Michael, Mikael Blomqvist, uh, and no, not, no, I'm sorry, Love. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Salander. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, so journalist Michael Blomqvist and hacker Elizabeth Salander, who was played by, um, uh, what the hell's her name in the first movie in Dragon Tattoo? I can't remember who it was. But your boy Skinny. They, they recast and also. Um, James Bond, you know, Daniel Craig was in the first movie as well. Uh, but, you know, they, they encounter a web of spies and cyber criminals and government corruption. These books have been huge, especially yeah. in Europe. Uh, they actually made the, the books into movies in Europe already. They're kind of lower budget. And then America is, you know, Americanizing everything like they always do. Yeah. And way bigger budget. And bigger budgets. Um, I really liked Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And like I said, this is kind of like a semi sequel, not sequel reboot type of thing with mm. that. So I'm all for watching it. You know, yeah. I'm going to give it I a shot. I like the first one, so. so. Uh, the half one, whatever. Because you said they're kind of sequel, kind of reboot yeah, type yeah, thing. It's kinda, so it's kind of the first one, but not really. Yeah. But whatever. You know what I'm saying. You're picking up what I'm putting down, fans. Uh, I'm, I'm picking it up. I hope they are. October 16th, 18th. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I still I need to watch first one. I cannot wait for this, dude. Fantastic Beasts blew me away. I, I I waited to see it until it was out on, I think, HBO. And I'm pissed that I didn't go and see it in mm. theaters. Because whenever I saw it, I was like, oh, really? Like, Harry Potter was good. Like, I enjoyed it a lot. They're going to try and make more. Like, get out of here. That's not going to be good. Yeah, stop. And I went and saw or I watched it at home on HBO. And I was like, holy shit, this is great. Now I can't wait for the next one. So I, I'm going to watch it. I need to watch it. Yeah. Maybe I'll watch it this week. Yeah. Do it. I think you'll like it. I, I do. I, th- I think you'll like it. Uh, let's see. Then we have three coming out on October 21st, which I think is kind of weird. October 21st. There's nothing really. Not October 21st. I'm sorry. November. November. And November 16th is Fantastic Beasts, not October. Wow, my, my typing is bad. 11. It's okay. 11. So November 16th is Fantastic Beasts, not October. November. And then November 21st, I uh, have three movies three movies coming out Ralph Breaks the Internet which is the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to it I really enjoyed Wreck-It Ralph we've talked about this in never, the past never seen the first one um, I, give it a watch I think you'll enjoy it yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those I don't have kids so I never really yeah I think you'll like it uh, but Ralph Breaks the Internet looks. I think it's going to be fun it looks funny from the commercials yeah uh, probably one another one of my big movies I'm looking forward to this year is Creed 2 yeah, first Creed fucking was amazing. I need to rewatch the first uh, one. Such a good movie, and the fact that they're bringing Drago son into it against you know Adonis, <laughs> like that's just that's amazing to me. I think it's gonna be awesome. So can't wait for Creed two, and then this third one I put on here just because I want to mention how much we don't need this movie, um, Robin Hood. So they're remaking <laughs> I, Robin Hood. I forgot that existed. <laughs> um, it's with that kid from uh, Kingsman, though. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it's, um, what's his face? Uh, Taron Egerton. So this is the cast. Okay. Now I'm going to say this cast and people are going to be like, holy shit, this should be a good movie, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you you're wrong. Taron Egerton, Jamie Dornan, uh, Jamie Dornan's from the 50 shades movies, Jamie Foxx, Ben Mendelsohn, um, and Paul Anderson. So you sit there and you're like, okay, this cast actually is a pretty good cast, except for the movie looks like shit. Like, it looks like complete yeah. shit. First it, off... It looks like the uh, Great Wall. Uh, no, what it looks like is... Um, what was that movie that came out last year that was... Uh, uh, man, what was it? It had... Uh, what's his face in it from Sons of Anarchy? Um, shit, what was that movie? Oh, the King Arthur movie. Like, uh, that's what yeah. it reminds me of. And, like, King Arthur looked horrible to me. This looks just as bad. You know, and I'm just like, come on. Like... Come on. Like, there's First a of, reason we don't need those movies again. And here's the thing. we They did a, a reboot of Robin Hood with, uh, um, what's his name? Um, 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 Your um, boy. The dude who played Gladiator. I can't think today. Russell Crowe? Russell Crowe, thank you. They did a reboot back, I want to say, like, 2011, 2012, 2013, somewhere around there with Russell Crowe. And it was cool because it was the origins of Robin Hood. Mm. And it was a different take because, yeah. you know, he had a different name and he kills somebody. Like, near the end of the movie, he kills somebody and he was like, what was your name? And he's like, Robin Hood. And he's like, oh, I'm Robin Hood now or something like that. You know, yeah. like he takes the name. <laughs> and, and that's it, pretty badass. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to a sequel to this, like to see Robin Hood then because this mm. was the, the, the story of how he became Robin Hood and I was looking forward to seeing a sequel. It didn't do well enough so they didn't make a yeah. sequel, obviously. And now they're rebooting it again. Like, literally, like 
once every like ten S- years, we're like getting a Robin Hood movie. Stop beating a dead horse. It's like if people didn't buy into the last one, why are they going to buy into yeah. this one? Like the last one that people really bought into was that Kevin Costner one back in the early '90s with Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman and um, um, what's his name? Um, <sighs> Your boy. Anyway, penis. I can't think of names today. I don't know what's going on with me. But hey, that's you know, me every day, you know, man. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, great movie. And, and, and honestly, Robin Hood, Men in Tights was probably the last big one, you know, by Mel yeah. Brooks. So why are they? And, but it was such a different take. But why do they keep beating a dead horse? I don't know. It's um, like get your dick out of it. I, I think me. I think it's terrible putting it up against not only a, a kids movie, Ralph Breaks the Internet, which not just kids are going to go see. You know that Robin Hood is probably looking for that age group between like. 15 and like 30 35 yeah they're targeting us you know specifically but, me but you and i have the choice of going seeing ralph breaks the internet which is like targeting like four years old to like 25 mm. or we can go see creed which is targeting like 18 to like 50 you know yeah. so it's like we fall in so if i were to like if i were to sit down and say okay that week i want to see two movies ralph breaks the internet creed to robin guess what i'm not seeing Robin Hood. I'm not going to see it. I think it was dumb for them to put it out that week. I'll go see Venom a second time. <laughs> Especially because when when I look at it, the rest of the the month, there's nothing else the rest of the month of November. Then there's really nothing at all because I don't have anything until December 14th. So they could have pushed it like early yeah. December where there's nothing else and at least might have a chance. The fact that that first weekend it's opening up against Creed 2 and Ralph Breaks the Internet, it's fucking stupid. Uh, stupid like they're not thinking they they're, probably they're not just trying know. to make money either yeah they're probably like nobody's gonna see this movie <laughs> yeah you know. like this was just a quick paycheck for me yeah uh but jumping to december 14th spider-man into the spider-verse i'm excited for that so it's a new animation style uh which i'm not too I like big it. a fan of i know you're a big fan of it it's a lot more comic booky looking mm-hmm. like it looks exactly. like the pages of comics jumped onto the screen and it has my favorite character uh, from the spider-man Spider Gwen, yeah. So you got Spider Gwen. You have you're gonna have a whole bunch of different Spider Men. Miles Morales. Miles Morales is the main character in this. Uh, Peter Parker will be in the movie, but an older Uh, Peter Parker. An older Peter Parker. Uh, You have uh, Spider Man Noir, which is gonna be voiced by I believe Nicolas Cage. (laughs) That's gonna be fucking awesome. I I mean, you just got all these different like Spider Mans because you're gonna have the the multiverse of Spider Men in this movie for Mm. you know and, and. Spider Gwen and stuff like that. I think it's gonna be badass. I think the story's gonna be cool. I'm gonna see it because I want to see mm. the story. I, I'm just not sold on the art. I, I don't know. Some the art mm. just isn't doing. I know a lot, it's doing a lot for everybody else. Like people are like, oh, this is I great. Love it. I, I just I don't dig it as much as everybody else does. So I love it. I don't know. Definitely gonna see it though. Um, December nineteenth. I think you're looking forward to this more than I am. I am looking forward to it, but I wasn't a big fan of the original just because of the time frame when it came out way before my time and my grandfather used to watch it. But this is Mary Poppins Returns. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'll see it. I grew up watching Mary Poppins. So Yeah, I, I was never a big fan of those movies, like Mary Poppins, mm. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and The Sound of Music. Like, I, I liked I, I all clump, three of those. I clump, Fuck all, you. <laughs> I clump all of those into like the same movie to me. Like Those all are like, I mean, the same. They're all musicals. They're all essentially the same. <laughs> and I'm a big musical fan. It, it's except just, The Sound of never... Music is them like escaping Hitler. So. <laughs> it's true. Which is fucking it's, crazy. That's a little more grown up than Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Mary Poppins. Yeah. But Thinking back on it, that's a real adult movie. It really is. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I've always clumped it together because, like I said, I would go over to my grandfather's house when I was a kid, like on holidays and stuff like that. Mm. And he literally would watch, at least in my in my eyes, it was like Mary Poppins, Sound of Music, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. You know, he would watch them all like back to back. So it was just mm. one big movie to me because it was all the same all the time. I, it's like the people I could that just watch. Be mis- I could be misremembering this. It probably mm. never happened like that. But, you know, yeah, in my Yeah, it just eyes, ran, ran for you. Yeah. It's the same people that watch The Christmas Story for 24 hours on Christmas. I, they just need kicked in the balls, that's all. Because yeah. the movie's horrible. So, to shoot your eye out. God, the movie's too you know, The amount of times I hear that when I, when I talk about Airsoft to my grandmother. I'm like, we wear goggles, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, that is coming out on December... Um... um what is it saying? December 19th, and that is going to be with Emily Blunt, uh, Lynn manuel Miranda, which he is... Wow, that's a name. Well, he he uh, did... Um, he created Hamlet. He was, you know, the, mm. the Hamlet, which is on stage, you know, the stage play and stuff like that. I mean, he didn't make Hamlet. Not Hamlet. Not Hamlet. Is it Hamlet? Not Hamlet. What am I thinking of? Why did I say Hamlet? Shakespeare made Hamlet. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking <laughs> of. 
Oh my god. Hamilton. There not Hamlet. Go. Hamilton. I'm you not a big close. Bro- I'm not a big Broadway guy. Sorry. Sorry. I only um, knew you were wrong because I really like Shakespeare. But you have Emily Blunt, Lynn Manuel Miranda, Meryl Streep, Dick Van Dyke, um, Angela Lansbury, Julie Waters, Colin Firth. So this is a hell of a cast in Mary Poppins mm. Returns. So I, I think it's well, I'll it's watch worth it. watching it. Yeah. It's gonna get a lot of people just for nostalgia. And Emily Blunt's hot, so you know. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, the, the final week that I think anything is worth notating coming out in this year is on December 21st, just in time for the Christmas holiday, uh, Aquaman. Neat. So uh, the next film in the DC film universe, Aquaman, played by Jason Momoa, is coming out. It is directed by horror movie um, creator um, Jason Warren. Jason Warren, god damn it. Um, I can't even remember his name now. Um, Juan, that's his last name. Yeah, Huang. Juan. Um, but dude, I don't know why I can't think of names today. Like, I, I literally, as I was prepping this, I was like, I don't need to put notes because I know everything mm. about it. Yeah, um, not the same thing I do when I prepare podcasts. I know what I'm talking about <laughs> halfway through. Fuck! <laughs> damn it, what god, am I doing? Son of a bitch! <laughs> Uh, there, there's two on my list for 2018 that James you did. James Wan. Did I say that? Is that what I was going to say, James Wan? Maybe. I think I was going to say that, so I was right. God. James Wan um, is directing it. Um, you have Jason Momoa. You have Amber Heard, Willem Dafoe, Patrick Wilson, Dolph Lundgren, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, and Nicole Kidman. I can't wait for this movie. Um, I think it's going to be fun, exciting. Uh, obviously, I'm more looking forward to Shazam more than this, but I am mm-hmm. looking forward to this because I'm a big DC buff, so I'm looking forward to it. What were you saying? There's two on my list that you didn't name. Well, let me finish these last two here that are on December 21st. Bumblebee. Bleh. Yeah, and again, that, that's one. Just like Robin Hood, I put this on there because we don't fucking need it. We don't, but you know we're both going to go see it. I didn't see the last Transformers. I did. I, I, I mean, it. I didn't see it in theaters. I watched it on this app I have. but I, 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 Because I'm over Transformers. It wasn't... Uh, the, the story wasn't... The story was there. The execution was atrocious. Because the it, it, it's the pacing. It, it's like a real slow movie for the first two hours. Then the last half hour, sh- the climax happens and shit hits the fan and you don't know what's happening. Look, the only reason why I would be interested in, interested in seeing Bumblebee is because it isn't a Michael Bay film. So I'd like to see somebody else handle Transformers yeah. than Michael Bay. And actually have a coherent story. Yeah, so I might see... I don't know if it's going to be like one of those ones I have to go to theaters for. Uh, then again, my kids, they may exactly. want to see it. So that's my that. thing is, these ones that come out on the 21st, I'm not going to see like immediately. Yeah. Like I'm going to wait till like in between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, and or then, maybe even after New Year's. And then the final one that I'm going to talk about is Alita Battle Angel. Now, oh, let me, yeah, right let me uh, say what this is a little bit. Set several centuries in the future, the abandoned Alita is found in the scrapyard of Iron City by Ido, a compassionate cyber, do- cyber doctor who takes the unconscious cyborg Alita to his clinic. When Alita awakens, she has no memory of who she is, nor does she have any recognition of the world she finds herself in. As Alita learns to navigate her new life in the treacherous streets of Iron City, Ido tries to shield her from the mysterious pa- her mysterious past. Now, uh, this is going to star Rosa Salazar, play- who's playing Alita. I've never seen her before. Uh, Christoph Waltz, which if you are a fan of Quentin Tarantino movies, you will know him mm-hmm. from Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained. Uh, Jennifer Connelly, Ed Screen. Um, he, you'll know Ed Screen from Deadpool. He was, mm-hmm. uh, um, what's his name? Um, come on, the bad guy's name. Why? No, 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 no. The, first, kid? the first, the first Deadpool. Oh, the first Deadpool. Um, Francis. There, there we go. go. Uh, it also has Mahershala Ali. You'll know him from uh, Luke Cage. He was in the first season of Luke Cage. Nice. Jackie Earl Haley. You'll know him as. Uh, the remake Freddy Krueger, which was horrible, or you will uh, know him from The Watchmen, and that's about all for that movie. Uh, but I, I think it looks good. I, I think it's um, James Cameron actually helped with the screenplay. I did not know that, uh, but it's directed by Robert Rodriguez, so it's going to have his flair. If you know Robert Rodriguez, you're going to know mm. what his you know, his type of flair. So I'm kind of looking forward to it like that. You can tell that it's, you know, very, very, um, takes a lot of stuff from um, anime, you mm-hmm. know. And, and you can even just tell from the style. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it just because I think it's going to be interesting. I know they pushed it back. It was supposed to be coming, it was supposed to come out earlier this year and they pushed it back for some reason. 
Either way, I'm looking forward to it. It does look good. It looks real good. Yeah, true. true. Um, so the two that you missed, uh, Mowgli. That is... Did is it that, get delayed? Is, I think it got delayed till next year, and it's going to be on Netflix. It's a Netflix... Oh, yeah, no, no. I forgot about that, so yeah. never mind. I'll take that back. I, I'll take that back. And then you also didn't mention... Um, fuck, where is it? Sorry about the silence. I'm just stupid, and it's I true. saw it. I've seen it twice. He's where really the fuck stupid. is it? I mean, you know, he's he's a pretty big loser too. What you need to do is you need to go on Twitter and you need to just tag him in a whole bunch of stuff, stupid pictures and stuff like that. Pictures of intimidating toilets. <laughs> or no, no, because this is how fucking bored I was the one day. Um, look up hashtag toilets with shit in them, and there's a whole there's this fucking Twitter that dedicates to people. Posting pictures That's of shit ridiculous. in toilets. That is ridiculous. <laughs> like, that is what this world has come to. I don't know how I got down that rabbit hole, but I got to that rabbit hole. I, I honestly don't know. You don't know what you're going to talk about? Yeah, because I, I I saw it and I I don't see it anymore. So maybe I was. No, nope, I, I think it came out early before. So never mind. No, nope, we talked about everything. I forgot Mowgli was delayed. Sorry about that. Two minutes of silence. Yeah. All right. Well, if that's all that you got, um, next week I think we're gonna kind of talk about something. Next week, I don't know what mm-hmm. yet. I haven't decided what we're gonna talk about. But make sure you check out all of our stuff on uh, Podbean, on iTunes, that kind of stuff. Join our Facebook group and hey, um, beca- become a patron. And become a patron on our Patreon with our network, which is uh, uh, Nerd Talklips Podcast Network on mm-hmm. Patreon. For as little as one dollar a month, you can get some additional content, extra episodes every month. Uh, you can get different stuff like that. So it's going to be cool. Definitely check out our Patreon. Again, $1 a month, less than a cup of co- a cup of coffee. Look, if you can't afford a dollar a month, you need to reevaluate your life. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's going to get people to, you know. Look, it, it, honestly, if you can't afford a dollar a month, you have bigger things to worry about. It's true. And don't like, don't pay us. Go fix this. Yeah. yeah. And yeah come go back t- to us. Go take care of your then life. Because we love you and we want you to better yourself. Exactly. But then come back and remember Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so definitely do that. You know, we have uh, merchandise up on Teespring. Uh, so you know, all the link is links are below. In all our the links are. All the links are. All the links are down below in our description, so you can find Patreon, our Twitter, our Facebook group, our merchandise, all of that stuff you can find down there. So make sure you click on those and f- hit us up and you know help us out, support us a little bit because we love you and we want you to love us back sometimes you know yeah we, sometimes we'll it, touch it can't always be give 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 we gotta have a little you know, yeah have a don't little worry thing. we'll be doing a community day here where we'll take questions and try to answer them and stuff coming up soon coming up soon uh, so that's what's going on there um, yeah make sure you check out movie boot uh, that's gonna be a patreon exclusive our next one is going to be mm. rebooting the DC universe film yep. universe so that's gonna be exciting that's I need to work on that <laughs> all right so with all that i have been robert from bridging the geekdoms podcast with me as always has been your boy skinny penis and we will talk to you all later bye bye